podcast on Plus TV Africa. We are looking at uh, politics right now. The National Executive Committee, neck of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has fixed the cost of its presidential expression of interest and nomination forms at 100 million naira. The spokesperson of the party, Felix Morka, disclosed this at the end of the emergency meeting of the NEC on Wednesday in Abuja. He said the expression of interest form is 30 million naira, while the nomination form will cost 70 million naira. So far, about 10 aspirants have declared interest to be the flag bearer of the party for the 2023 general elections. Those who have declared interest include ex-Lagos State Governor Bola Tinubu, Vice President Jimmy Oshibajo, the Minister of Transportation, Timiamichi and the Minister of Labor and Productivity, Chris Ngege. Others are Governor Yahaya Bello of Kogi State, his counterpart in Ebony State, David Umai, a former Imo State Governor Rochas Ukorocha, former Senate President Kent Namani, among others. This has generated mixed reactions from Nigerians, uh, from the high cost to uh, corruption and all of that. But joining us now on this conversation is the publisher of uh, Metro Star, Emilka uh, Madunago. He's been with us uh, since off the press. But let's talk about all of that now. Thanks for staying with us, Emilka. Thank you very much. Good all right. Uh, how do we even start this particular discourse? Uh, lots of uh, reactions have trailed uh, this uh, 100 million naira. Uh, nomination expression of interest uh, of the APC for the presidential ticket. Even the PDP um, has its own reaction and Nigerians are saying the political party is now more like um, a business uh, a concern and they're more interest, uh, interested about what they can make from the party as against uh, giving uh, enough people you know, the threshold and the opportunity you know, to exercise the franchise of um, uh, being able to contest. What are your thoughts, Emeka? Well, it's interesting because um, politics is one major business we do in Nigeria. It's a big business. So it's the big players that are going to politics. Um, so even you have 18 political parties. I don't know why people are so focused on one political party, what they are doing with themselves. It's a family affair, like the PDP. I'm even surprised the PDP is even responding because they are just a little away from APC. Then after the PDP, you have SDP. After the SDP, you have APGA. You have ADC. Just the removing fractions. Mm -hmm. Just removing some figures mm -hmm. away. So what's the difference? I mean, if you, the point is, they are trying to just tell us how lucrative politics has become in this country. And um, we need to really have a conversation about extracting extracting productivity from this people. You know, like I told you, government, government officials are really usually very busy, but not productive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, largely non-productive. So ensuring that the resources available to them for different kinds of things turn out, you know, can be accounted for in the kinds of policies and outcomes we see from their activities. And it's also um, interesting uh, because these, election, these elections you know, will bring out a lot of new things. Remember President Muhammad Buhari said um, he would, he asked the youth to hold on, you know, for him to finish so that before they start pushing not too young to run. So you now see young people, I saw one on your screen, one 38 year old, uh, yeah. or what you call somebody. Then you have different people coming out, women also coming out. You also have um, the governor of Kogi State, yeah, Bello, telling you that, tell Nigeria that he is the voice of the youth, he's experienced, he's been in government, he's been a governor for eight, going to eight years. So he knows the problems of the youth, he knows the agenda of the youth, he can push it. You have, um, you have Ashwaji Bola Tinubu, telling you that, okay, it's been a lifelong ambition. He wants to serve Nigeria. You have Vice President Jeremy Oshimbajo telling you that, okay, I will continue from when, where yes, President yes. Buhari stops. And Nigerians are saying, okay, we don't understand this kind of. Some people say it's a threat. Well, these are interesting times. And you have other, you have ministers, you have other kinds of, even senators, or Jews or Kalu, you know. Then in the PDP, you have um, Anim saying, he will, he will continue from where Jonathan stopped in 2015. That's seven years ago. So all kinds of, you have different ideas coming up. So if the APC decides to say 100 million, what it means 
if you permit me to play the devil's advocate, is that this is serious business. We want serious contenders to come forward, not jokers, not people who will come and say, okay, I want to run for president. And then along the line, they say, okay, my family and community have prevailed on me to step down for this person. And it becomes a joke, even though that's what politicians do. But for you to put down 100 million is a big business. Then to the other side, Nigerians should also get ready to ask questions. Where is all this money coming from? Mm -hmm. So again, it's one political party out of 18. So like I've said, if you know you, your interest cannot be factored into what these political parties are doing, one political party is doing, you have 17 others. If you can't afford the fees of the PDP, which is half of uh, that of the APC, all right, try the SDP, which is a bit away from uh, PDP, or next door is uh, ABGA, next door ADC. Just little, little sums. Some parties are saying, come and take forms free, but I wonder <laughs> how, how that will work out, because you have to process the forms. You have to pay certain fees to process these forms. So it's, 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 it's beyond <coughs> looking at the forms, at the cost of the forms, I'm sorry. We should look at the, what each of, each of these candidates, is, which of these aspirants, I'm sorry, is bringing up. Mm -hmm. What are the current issues? Because if we get lost, if we get lost in the debate about the cost of forms and all of that, we we'll allow the real issues to slip by. So what are the real issues? You have security. You have youth. I've talked about, I talked about youths before. Youths and women. Inclusiveness. Youths and women. You have um, food. Hunger. Hunger is a major problem. Then none of our refineries is working. In fact, has produced a drop of oil. Maybe in the past, I don't know how many years, has produced a drop of oil. Then you have infrastructure. Even though President Buhari is telling you that uh, infrastructure is the strongest point. But a lot of Nigerians will still tell you that the roads are largely not what they expect them to be. So we, we will put up all these issues. Then we need to also look at the track record of these, the contestants, of each of, you know, a, of, each of them. Nigerians are telling you that, for instance, President, uh, Vice President Yemi Oshimbaji has been a part of the Buhari administration. So they don't even want to hear anything about Buhari once he's gone. Let him just go with everybody around him. But you also have ministers who have been a part of this administration coming out to say, well, um, all right, we will make things better. Then you have uh, Tinubu who is coming to say, no, 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 I will restructure things, I will change things, I will make things better, fine. Then you have, I'm still talking of the APC. Yes. Then you have uh, somebody, like, you have Ojikalu coming out to tell you that, okay, I will, I will make sure that Nigerians have a better deal. He's not been talking too much about continuing with the legacies like um, some other candidate. Then you have um, yeah, Yaya Bello, who is trying to keep a distance from all that, will continue with Buhari's policies and all that. Coming out to say, okay, as governor, I have putting youth, women, even people with special needs. I have been able to secure my state, keep my state secure. You know, a state that has borders with 10, 10, 10 other states. I've kept my state secure. I've been able to serve my people, even though people say, well, we still have areas to cover up. Yes, no, there's no perfect system. Okay. So when you look at all these issues, look at the profiles of the candidates, Nigerians should focus on what the issues are. Let the parties sort out their party issues. Their yeah. party issues. But, but, yes. if, but if you even look at it, you know, because I'm, I mean, we've also had some Nigerians who are concerned about the issues that you have raised. And if you look at it, nobody seemed to be saying anything about the blueprint. When we're talking about the blueprint, it's not just a statement that's been made. You hear some presidential aspirants saying we're going to, you know, turn the country around make it to compete with the likes of Japan and what have you. These are just statements. There's no, um, you know, how you want to address all of these issues and how do the people even get to that point? But that, that's on the one hand. Mm -hmm. But let's also look at the issue of, because it is at the um, party level that we get to, you know, the larger level. And this is very fundamental to our democratic process. And so if they don't get it right, then it means the entire process might just be, you know, truncated. 
So um, with the pattern now, right now, INEC also stipulated time where um, this party should be able to say this is the pattern, this is the mode mm -hmm. we're going to adopt. Yeah. Uh, for, for instance, the presidential um, you know, primaries is going to be here for some of these political parties. And the APC is still not decided. We hear... Um, they are, you know, going off the issue of consensus. consensus. I might yeah. just be delving. Yeah, the electoral, act, the uh, electoral yeah. act doesn't. Yes. yes, and so the issue of indirect no, primaries yeah. and, and direct no, primaries. Yes. Direct primaries. Yes. And so, so, um, what do you make of this, and, and what do you think it will play out, you know, for the APC? Do you see crisis? Do you see people decamping shortly after all of this, or even in the midst of all of this? No, people have even already started uh, defecting. So it's not. Politicians, politics is a game of interest. So politicians are always on the move to places where they feel their interests will be better taken care of. Uh, but um, I respectfully disagree with you that um, there have been just statements. Because some of these aspirants have come out to draw up clear, I mean, for instance, Pete Obi has told us that if he becomes president, he will have a special vote for hunger, to take care of hunger. And he has stated how he intends to do it. Tinubu has said, in terms of security, we need to boost the numbers of people in the of those in the armed forces. We need to boost their numbers. We need to employ, get more Nigerians into the security services so that they can effectively police and secure the nation and its borders. Then you go on to somebody like uh, again, you, you go on to the other aspirants here and there. You go on to Yaya Bello. He tells you that okay, fine that the problem here is that one, Nigeria has no need borrowing. That if we manage our resources very well, we don't need to borrow. So, so um, yes. for, for me, the reason I'm saying this is okay, mm. because this is a statement. Uh, have we, you know, have they been able to, we know that the time for campaign has not started, yes. but have we seen this aspirant putting out this document, the how, answering the how. So if you say that... Of course, they made their... They, they, then they, they, you begin they to put, okay, yes. this is how we intend to recruit. Yes. This is what we need to do. Yes. This is how. Because it's not just a statement. They make this statement. Oh, yes. we're going to do this. We understand the problem. It's mm. because we don't have personnel. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you see what happens. We have, a, we have you know, president who came in in 2015. It worries everybody. It bothers not just, you know, the rude, but the ruling class. Everyone is part of all of the issues that we're faced with at the time. Security, economy, and corruption. Option. How far have we fed? These things were actually said. Yeah. It felt like it was written down. Yeah, you but see, we haven't seen the how you know you that see, was put to answer them. You see, the problem is this. Part of why we are here today is that President Muhammad Buhari came in on an adversarial note. Okay, 16 years of PDP have been a waste. All right, I won't do <coughs> what PDP has been doing. Instead of looking at government as a continuum and following up on policy. If there were policies that were not well thought out or well executed, you could have tweaked them you and made them that. better. Yeah. You had a policy like you win, for instance, which was meant to produce young entrepreneurs, women, you know, young youths. But what happened? It was just it. It was just it. Empower. empower. Where have we gone with uh, where have we gone with empower? When Jonathan was here, we had Shopee. It got mad in controversy, and that was the end of it. We, do, we didn't know where the funds went to. So part of the problem is the adversarial nature of politics we play in Nigeria. My predecessors were all useless. My predecessors destroyed the country. My predecessors destroyed the state. My predecessors did nothing. But you ride on the roads, they tired. You have an office you report to as the president or the governor, which was maintained by a predecessor. If there was nothing, if they did nothing, so how come you, you have an office you go to every day? You have a government house you sleep in every night. You see, the point is we must make our system a policy-driven system. There must be clear-cut policies. And then Nigerians must ask the right kinds of questions from these people. But you see, right, that's what I'm talking about. Right now, we are mad in the debate over the cost of forms. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking, like my colleague has said, give us your blueprints. They've declared, they brought out all these statements, like she said. But you can see, too, if you go through the declarations, they contain action plans about what they intend to do. But you see, we also, as citizens, mm -hmm. it's our civic duty to make sure that we look at the declarations and say, okay, 
what are how give be more clear give us more clarity on how you intend to do this and do this and do this but and don't this. you think that this um, you know the sum itself because i understand the fact that you're saying let's not be carried away you know by the forms i mean the, mm -hmm. amount the cost of, people, of the forms, the cost yes. of the forms. Yes. but let's also pay attention to you know these individuals their capacity to perform and yes. their policies on capacity, ground but don't you think yes. that this also would influence their behavior for instance okay. we remember a time i would make reference to 2014 the president had complained about 27.5 million naira, if i'm not mistaken and that it was so much and that he had to take bank loans so imagine someone who does not have i don't know if all of them you know have the capacity to cough out and chunk out 100 million it might not be so much but don't you think there's already a mindset that might just think that if you have people coming together to support you to get this then the policies at the end of the day will be reflecting the interests of of you know this sector persons you might just be doing the bidding or you might more be concerned about how to recoup your funds because it's it's like a business transaction well so don't you think uh, well, that well, these like i said kind of politics like i said earlier policies? like i said earlier Politics in Nigeria has come to be seen as a lucrative investment. That's one side. But the other side is that the conversation, Nigerians must get, the, get to the conversation where we have to decide what's best for us, what's most workable for us. We started out this country in 1960 with a parliamentary system of government where you elect MPs. The MPs now choose the prime minister. But by 1979, we opted for the presidential system of government, which is the most expensive. It's a very expensive system of government. It's not cheap anywhere so, so, to operate so, it. So let, let's even talk about that because you um, mentioned that when we were having a pre chat just before we got on air. So the system of government that we are running, is it actually um, a bane to us right now as it is? Because you were saying that um, the parliamentary system was way much cheaper compared to mm -hmm. yeah. the, the presidential system that we approve mm -hmm. right now. Are mm -hmm. we supposed to be going back to the parliamentary system or just what exactly? Well, we it's, for all, it's for all Nigerians to decide. 215 million people. It's for us to decide. We are having a constitution amendment exercise right now. If we can accommodate it, fine. If not, we should prepare for future constitution amendments so that we make sure that we get on board those platforms that will advance the collective interest. Not just saying, oh, cost of forms is expensive, but you want a system whereby, you know, that promotes winner takes all. Oh, it's my brother. It's, it's, it's our turn. It's the turn of our area. Because we talk about forms, but the same people talking about forms will tell you, no, no, no. It's the turn of our area. It's the turn of our son, of our daughter to get into office. What do we really want? But but you see, um, um, if, if we also look at it recently, you, yes. you remember the statement from Afe Babalola, who talked yes. about the fact that we should suspend you know, the, uh, the 2023 elections and get an interim government. Now, one of the concerns he raised was transactional, uh, because we, we cannot afford to um, continue in this recycling old people leadership. and then get into the transactional <laughs> government that we're going through. As much as a lot of people have the book, my concern here is, this, because the money back politics, as we have described it over time, mm -hmm. uh, don't you think it has affected how politics, the policies, if you see the policies, at the end of the day, they really don't reflect the interest of the people. And don't you think that it's this kind of transactional, you have mentioned it, that is business. And so if people see it as business, then what policies do you come through with that would reflect the interest of the people that would serve the as interest of Nigeria? No, no, let, let, let me correct something. I'm not saying, I said politicians, okay. not all of them see it as a lucrative venture not all of them so, but you see even if the forms are expensive it doesn't stop you from performing it doesn't stop you from bringing up policies it might not even give you the chance of even getting there to even talk of performing as well why won't you then then it's up to the people you have 18 political parties if you feel that okay fine apc they are charging 100 million naira for forms we won't vote for their candidates because their forms are too high you have other parties vote for their candidates so that the conversation is not just about just talking points. Okay, your forms are too high. Uh, it's about money back, politics. It's about this, that, and the other. You have a wide choice. Nigerians should, uh, should exercise their rights to elect their leaders. It is a given. For us, it's a given for people in a constitutional democracy. Exercise your right. Come out on election day, you see people playing football. People sit at home, they want to watch what's going on on TV instead of going out to go and cast their votes. And at the end of the day, they say the government is not working. We are also a part of the 
democratic process. We must come out and say, okay, these are the things we want. And you mentioned something about uh, old people. Yeah. Yes, Nigerians have expressed concern about old people. Then you see young people coming up and saying, okay, look at me. This is one. One is a governor. He says, look at me. I've done something in my state. Then you have some other young people here and there. Why are people not looking at them? Already you have support groups. One of the, one of the aspirants, it was actually some support groups led by youths that bought his form for him. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, that was youths. Those are the youths you're talking about that are being shut out. Okay, fine. You have youths coming in, in APC, in other parties. Why are we not looking at those youths? Because we need to move away. We need, the next president must be somebody who has capacity to perform, who is healthy, strong, mm -hmm. and who is competent. We must move away from all, right. all these okay. issues. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to just uh, you know press pause on this particular topic for sake of time. Emeka Matunago is uh, a journalist. He is also uh, the publisher of a Metro Star uh, newspapers. He is a political affairs analyst as well. He joined us now to look at all of the issues, uh, the, the fallout from the APC National Executive uh, uh, Committee and uh, the nomination forms and uh, the way forward you know, for the youth and of course um, politics and elections in Nigeria. Thank you once again. Thank Emeka. you very much. All right, it's still the breakfast. Now we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we'll be focusing on insecurity in a moment. Stay with us.